Singer Christina Grimmie was a young star whose YouTube page just reached 1 million subscribers. After appearing on The Voice, she shot to music superstar. One night at a concert in Orlando, Florida, she was gunned down to death at the age of 22. This week on Death and Entertainment. Live from Los Angeles. 911, what is your emergency? Here in Hollywood now. Two counts of murder, injury, and death. Oh my God! Shocking new details that has stunned the entertainment world. Um, this makes me a little nervous. The hair stood up on my arms. Just like in the movies. Ah! What do you call this thing anyway? Death in entertainment. Hello, 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 Dead O Universe. Oh my God, we're back on. We are back. <laughs> yeah. It's been a while. We're from an undisclosed bunker here. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise known as our new studio. Yes. 2024, we got some new stuff going on here. Yeah. Working some kinks out. Welcome back from the new year, everybody. Uh, my name is Kyle Plouffe. My name is Mark Mulcairin. And I'm Alejandro Dowling. And today we are discussing the very sad case of Christina Grimmy. Yes, Grimmy. That puts the grim in Grimmy. It's a very Grimmy story. Yes. <laughs> it's so juicy, you're going to be saying, Grimmy some more. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Hey, but not before we go to June 10th, 2016. Here we go. Okay. Um, well, June 10th, 2016, the day of the deed, the day of the unfortunate incident. Um a lot going on at this time. Obviously, you know, Trump is going crazy. Uh, like, uh, 2016 is when we started, you know, being depressed as a country. I think that the beginning of the end of this nation started around this time. Am I wrong? It's where the new reality branched off. Yeah. yeah. And, and we're dealing with whatever we are right now as, as a country and as a people. Um, so to kick that off, Kyle, could you tell us what's going on in the music situation right now? Yes. The number one song at this time, June 10th, 2016, One Dance. Drake featuring Wizkid and Kyla. I don't even know that. I, I don't know much about. We were talking about Drake before this because we're yeah because Most Def recently said something disparaging about him. Yasin Bay, formerly known as Most Def, said that uh, Drake makes shopping music. Yeah, <laughs> it's compatible with shopping. Yeah, moms at Target will listen to Which it. Which sounds like a shot. It doesn't sound like a good thing. Yeah, <laughs> maybe Target might like that, but. Target's kind of hip sometimes. Yeah, yeah, you know, sometimes I buy my clothes there, and you know, I've I'm Hell ne yes. I've never been described as hip. So. <laughs> <laughs> I hate to say I'm still a Walmart guy. Oh, wow. okay. We might have a fight here after the podcast. <laughs> yeah. uh, Alejandro, what's going on with the movie situation? Finding Dory, which wow. has made three hundred and thirty million at this point, June tenth, twenty sixteen, and it went on to make more than a billion. That's right, folks. You heard me correctly. One billion dollars. Yeah. <laughs> Uppercase B uh, underscore bold. <laughs> billion dollars and this has to be one of the worst titles for a sequel i think because the first one's finding nemo yeah that works okay. like nemo that's a cool name yeah dory well you know they once they were solidified with the characters like we're stuck with this and we just want to move on you know what they still made a fucking billion dollars so it doesn't matter five tickets for finding dory yeah it just doesn't sound right <laughs> <laughs> and isn't that ellen's character She's in that. No, but isn't she Dory? She is. Yeah. She shows up later in the story as well, by the way. Not, what? I don't want to give anything away. But yeah, in this story. In the story we're going to talk about later on. Oh, Ellen, Ellen De no. Ellen DeGeneres, sometimes called Ellen DeGeneres, is involved in the story. <laughs> wow. And Kyle has also called her... A cunt. Oh, oh yeah. God. Kyle went. I am on. It. In the Anne Hayes episode, <laughs> yeah. I threw in a bleep just to be safe. Yeah. <laughs> Kyle's like a British guy on our podcast. He's calling women the C word. Like, Jesus Christ. Interesting you say that. Top news of this time Britain voted to leave the European Union. Okay, wait, why is that? A, how is that a segue into that? It's well, because the British. British say... Cunt. Oh, that's right. You okay. just said an English guy, Britain. Hello. Okay, I'm still like. Like <laughs> flabbergasted at the fact that he used the C word at that moment. Yeah, <laughs> I'm very right now. offended. Yeah. Uh, Obama visited Cuba and El Chapo is recaptured after escaping a Mexican jail and he's extradited to the U.S. Oh, okay. So, yeah. 
Yeah. Well, Al Chapa, you never know what's going on with that guy. And then I also remember that Anton Yelchin died. Oh, uh, yeah. It was very close to this date. Go back to that time. Yeah, I yeah. really can remember this for some reason. Yeah, which which is a day that lives in infamy in the Dipod universe because yeah, absolutely, I think about that the most, the Anton Yelchin death because it was kind of it was crazy the way he parked on that that hill, yeah. uh-huh. and then just to imagine a jeep coming at you like ah. <laughs> Not only that, you just showered, you're going to band practice, you're yeah. very excited, and then suddenly it's like whoa, and you're a movie star on on the trajectory up. You like you're like kicking ass. He already had another Star Trek in the can. Yeah. yeah. Jesus. Now he's in the can. Then he was flattened like a can. (laughs) Yikes. (laughs) He's getting recycled. Wow. (laughs) Okay, well, what better time than right now than to get into the story of Christina Grimmie? Let's do it. Okay, hey, Mark, you ready to grimmy the details? <laughs> yeah, let's. Nice. I'll give you the grimmy of it. Um, all right, so singer Christina Grimmy, born in Marlton, New Jersey. Oh, Jersey gal. Marlton. Yeah, a lot of these New Jersey I towns, feel like they ran out of names. They, right. <laughs> yeah. They just sprout up like weeds. It got worse and worse. <laughs> yeah. Marlton. As you go south, it just gets weirder and weirder and worse and worse. Yeah. Uh, born in Marlton, New Jersey, March 12th, 1994. It's closer to Philly. Is it? Martin, uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's not a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, her mother worked as a receptionist in her, um, and she got breast cancer while she was like in her 50s. Oh, mm. no. Sad that's, story. Yeah. yeah. But she survived. Um, her father worked at Verizon. Oh, the story continues to be sad. Gets worse and worse. <laughs> so, yeah, she's a pretty working class family. Yeah. And she probably had a good deal on her phone. Yeah, she she got roaming, I'm sure. Fl- family plan. Yeah. Hey, you trying to rub it in there, Kyle? Mm-hmm. Now that she's lost her mom? Jeez. <laughs> the, her mom survived. Oh, did she survive? Yeah, the mom survived. Oh, yeah. I didn't remember you well, saying that. I didn't that. say she oh, died of breast cancer. I said she got it. Oh, yeah. Silly me. I you a... skipped to the death <laughs> all like, the time. Ooh, yeah. she's <laughs> dead, huh? <laughs> you had me a dead mom. Yeah, like Bill Hader playing, uh, what's his name, Keith Morrison or whatever. Oh, yeah. Ooh. That must have been wild. <laughs> you mean Matthew Perry's <laughs> stepdad? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's true. I found a dead body. Were you around? <laughs> Ooh. Ooh, that's fun. <laughs> So uh, then she survived breast cancer and stopped being a receptionist? I don't know. I Yeah, that's a good question. I don't know the ins and outs of the mom's career after that, but I assume a lot of the mom's life was dedicated to managing her daughter's career at some point. Okay. Uh, I will get into that. Another thing Alejandro hates. What? what? Mom? Mom- oh, momagers. Momagers. You do, <laughs> hate, you do hate that. What was the one uh, you really hated? Ryan Grantham's mom. Yeah. And Brittany Murphy's mom, I feel like. Well, come on. If you watch that Larry King interview with her and Simon Monjack, yeah. they were definitely fucking. Hey, yeah. love is love, okay? Jesus. Um, she's an Italian and Romanian descent. Ooh. Wow. Yeah. Uh, which is a weird combo, I guess. I'm trying to picture that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Who knows? Western and Eastern Europe coming together. Yeah. Uh, she has an older brother named Marcus who served as a road manager during her performances. So he was kind of like a, a brotherager. <laughs> <laughs> Marcus, that's the Romanian version of Mark. Wow. Yeah, that's true. Mark, yeah. I, I never trust a Mark with a C. Or a <laughs> us at the end. Just say Mark. Yeah. Don't make me do the extra work. I know. Yeah. Just I have to say Mark with a K whenever I'm uh, ordering from Starbucks. <laughs> and then they, they throw it in my face and I say, thank you. <laughs> Christina's father noticed from a young age that her his daughter was very talented as a singer, as young as six years old. If I worked at Verizon, I would be noticing talent, too. <laughs> yeah. Like, let's, hey, get, let's get you to work. Let's honey. get this profit machine going here. <laughs> <laughs> let's get me out of this cubicle chair, if you know what I mean. So, yeah, he saw dollar signs. So nothing wrong with that. No, I mean, she's talented. Why not? Yeah. He got her piano lessons at the age of 10. So they started her very early. Let's get this thing going. Ah, it's uh, kind of a reverse Ryan Grantham then. Because wasn't the mom playing the piano? Yeah. And then he snuck up behind her. 
Yes. So yeah. in this case, oh boy, uh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> you really, yeah, it's fine. Want to no... really do anything to go after Grandpa's mom again? <laughs> yeah. You brought it up. Let her, <laughs> let her lie. Let her sleep. Yeah. Let her rot in peace. Oh my, oh my god. Jeez. <laughs> That's a separate yes. podcast. Rotten peace by Alejandro <laughs> <laughs> You know what really grinds my gears? <laughs> this is rotten peace by Alejandro <laughs> Dowling. Momagers who raise killers. Yeah. Which innocent victim? Next, <laughs> yeah. Which irrational piece of hatred do I have to spew right now? I know, and even someone that's listening that works at Verizon now hates me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're disparaging Verizon. I right? take it back. In fact, I want to say it right now. I am a Verizon customer. So. Yeah, Who could. would ever like speak up? Like, oh, wait, do not say anything about Verizon. You know, <laughs> that's you know, true. Like, say anything about my grandmother, but not Verizon. In fact, they probably are agreeing with me that it sucks. Yeah, yeah. Every, everyone that works there, including the CEO, probably hates the company. <laughs> like, why is this even in business still? <laughs> For me. Yeah, for Andrew. Um, She was a natural introvert. Her brother helped her coax her out of her introvertness. Ah, how'd he do that? I, I I think just, you know, socialization. I don't know what you're thinking there. You, <laughs> no, I was wondering. I wanted to hear like a nice sibling story. A nice tidbit. I don't have a tidbit okay. for you. Yeah. A few years later at 15, she begins posting videos on YouTube around the year 2009 under the username... Zelda Love 64. Ooh. She started posting her musical videos on YouTube. YouTube, that I think that's the heyday. Definitely the heyday. I remember YouTube in 2005. Like I know, yeah. yeah. Isn't that crazy to imagine when it first started? Yeah. They would have some clips, but not a ton. Yeah. And then there was definitely a time limit, like 10 minutes. Yeah, you had to work your way up to get in like 20-minute videos. Oh, really? Yeah. To be posting 20 minutes? Yep. I didn't know that. Yeah. I didn't know YouTube until we started doing this. And I was like, oh, you can just post <laughs> YouTube videos? <laughs> yeah, I know. I mentioned maybe we can throw the podcast up on YouTube. Yeah. You're like, what? What's yeah. that? I didn't know any of this. St- I still don't kind of. But you're right. 2009, that's something like three to four years in. So if you were already on YouTube at this time regularly, you're in at the beginning, kind of like podcasting. Yeah. Yeah. So you probably get a lot of eyes on your videos. If you start at the beginning, you know, like um, like people that just start at the beginning, sometimes if you're good and you're early, Mm -hmm. you're going to skate for the rest of your life. on Yeah. Like Joe Rogan. Like Joe Rogan. Yeah, Yeah. He was there since the 2000s. Yeah, he started early. Very he, early. Yeah, he did. That's right. Because he saw Tom Green do uh, a video podcast. He's like, this is Graham Yeah, it was the uh, talk show in his living room. Yeah. Ah, yeah. uh, that's Yeah, right. and then that was like 2002, and he's like, I got to do this. And like, I think people saw the future of that. People thought like TV was going to be null and void right off the bat, but it took a while to get there. Yeah. It's getting there now. But then again, it was huge because <clears throat> they had like three channels. So whoever was on those channels just got insanely famous. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And she was big. Like uh, Christina Grimmy was like doing a lot of covers. She like you could do covers and not get those strikes yeah. right away. Like right now, <laughs> if you do a, even think about a cover, they already strike you. Yeah. And that probably would have been the time Bieber started. Yeah, Bieber was actually one of her first, um, Christina Grimmie's first fans, like people that actually pushed her forward. Oh, wow. he was a fan of her and oh, yeah. talked about her in his video. Yeah, what's that called, Gomez? Uh, Selena Gomez. Selena oh, yeah. Gomez, when, when she was dating Bieber, right? Yeah. They were... Two like of her biggest like supporters. That's crazy. That's a big support right there. Yeah, all these people kind of knew each other. They kind of like you know swam in the same kind of pond. Do you know about how many subscribers or the kind of views she was getting? Yeah, um, she was getting like I imagine millions. Yeah, over the course of ten years, so from two thousand and nine to like two thousand and nineteen, I guess she got like a hundred and ninety million views. Wow. Yeah. So you know, <laughs> she didn't live to see all those views, unfortunately. But oh no. But she was. Oh, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Twenty sixteen. Yeah, yeah. If I remember correctly, she would start out with stuff like she did Hannah Montana's uh, "Don't Want to Be Torn." That was her first song uh wrecking ball like she do covers of all these miley songs. cyrus yeah miley cyrus after she got dirty 
<laughs> no, that's Christina Aguilera. Yeah, but, <laughs> but Miley Cyrus did her own version of that when she was like dry humping Robin Thicke. On blurred TV. Lines. Yeah. Yes. And then yes, she came yes. out with Wrecking Ball. Yeah, I remember she was dancing with Blurred Lines and like, what was she doing there? That was kind of weird. And they weren't that blurry. Yeah, and she didn't really have the the butt for it. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> what? <laughs> Body shaming Anna Montana. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, I thought I was bad. Um, <laughs> she was act- <laughs> Are you like, I thought making fun of an innocent dead woman was bad. <laughs> <laughs> but You're talking about someone's butt? <laughs> A sad momager. I thought that was okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, a grieving mother. <laughs> but dissing someone's booty? No. That's unacceptable. That's, wow. that's the Alejandro line right there. Too far. <laughs> yeah, he just got alejandro Canceled, pal. I really want to ask you something. I want to get real into this. Yeah. Why Ryan Grantham's mom is such a great mom to you. Because she no, was not now. We'll go to <laughs> yeah, the let's time. let's let's table this for never. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, back to Christina Griffin. She's homeschooled for her junior year in 2010. The same year, she covered Nelly's "Just a Dream" with fellow YouTubers Sam Sui and Kurt Hugo mm. Schneider in a video okay. which received 190 million views. Sam Sui, no relation to Chop Sui, by the way. Different Sui. Ah. Yeah. Yeah, same different family too. Not the Newport <laughs> Sueys. And if you cover his song without his permission, he'll sue you. Oh boy. <laughs> okay. Um, already in the new year, we're off the rails. Here. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's been a minute. We're right? out of pocket. Yeah, yeah, we like we've been we we've been holding all this in for yeah. a long time. Um, 2011, she placed number two in YouTube's uh, competition with uh, behind Selena Gomez. So Selena Gomez got number one. On this my YouTube competition, oh. and Christina got number two. Wow! So like that's big. That is. But at that time, you're like, who's Selena Gomez? <laughs> but now it's like a whole different thing. So she came from YouTube. Yeah, totally from YouTube. Why did I think she was like a Disney girl? Who Selena Gomez? Yeah, she might have gotten that from that. I think a lot of people just like Bieber. A lot of people. A lot of kids just started out. It intersected. Hitting it online. Yeah. But so, yeah, if Grimmy had continued this trajectory, maybe she would have been on Only Murders in the Building. She could have. Or maybe been one of the people murdered in it. Oh, like, boy. Selena Gomez was, was, the, was the lead. I know. Yeah. <laughs> well, she was one of the murdered people in, in another building. In a building. Yeah. All right, now I feel bad. <laughs> But not that bad. Let's keep going. All right. Uh, <laughs> uh, so she was discovered, actually, by Selena Gomez's mother, uh, Mandy Tifi. Huh? Um, yeah, I guess that's the Selena Gomez's mom's name. Huh. Yeah, which is like, okay, well, maybe Gomez was a made-up name. Maybe she was British. Are you British? Because she's Tifi. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's got big teeth. Uh, yeah. <laughs> which is like a cup of Tifi. Um, so... <laughs> Christina plays a UNICEF charity concert. Um, she performed backup for Selena Gomez in the scene, which is like Selena Gomez had a band called Selena Gomez in the scene. Mm. And then Christina was like, she was like right her coattails, you know. Selena Gomez in the scene. So eventually they're like, just lose the scene. Yeah, it's cleaner. <laughs> Um, she just does a bunch of tours with like other YouTubers and stuff. In October 10th, 2011, she gets on Ellen DeGeneres, oh. where, where she performed a cover of Lil Wayne's How to Love. Ooh, I love that song. But you hate the the show, the yes, TV show. I yeah. do not like Ellen DeGeneres. You don't like the yeah. venue. Yeah. <laughs> That's huge, though. That was when Ellen was still considered nice. Be kind. Yeah, that was her motto. And she had probably just as many viewers on her show than these YouTubers. Yeah. Uh, She also gets American Music Awards November 20th. Um, She gets on Disney Channel's So Random. She gets to perform music on there in December. Uh January 2012, she moves to L.A., baby. Hello. Yeah, she comes out to the utopia that is Los Angeles. Here we are, baby. We're in a garage, bitch. (laughs) (laughs) And how did that work out for her? (laughs) Well, she's doing better than me still Yeah, in her current state. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) And he's not talking about California. (laughs) I'm talking about the garage. (laughs) (laughs) No, she does sign to CIA when she comes out here, though. She gets gets signed. With Michael Ovitz, or he's gone by that. But why would a mu- music person get signed to CAA? I That's get, very... Yeah, I don't know. Or isn't that like she's arrived, she's proven herself that she has fans, so 
that's when she gets the big agency. You know, you just got to prove you have a fan base. Yep. And there's money out there. That's what Cat Williams says. That's how Netflix assigns or gives a dollar amount to your special. What are your ticket sales from last year for any stand-up comic? And for a young kid that's talented, you're going to start throwing them into TV shows and stuff. Too, yeah, like. that's true. Yeah. Well, she does get a show. She gets a show called Power Up with Christina Grimmy on Disney. Dot com. Dot com. Yeah, yeah. Oh, this okay. is before Disney Plus. <laughs> Way before. They just had a dot com. Disney dot com. You just got it on the website. It's like sad. Oh, yeah. That is when. Still Union, though. Right. It was still Disney. Yeah. yeah. Kyle's got the he's got the in everywhere. He's got yeah. he's got the plus side of everything. Yeah. <laughs> but they were considered lesser than at that time. Anything that was on the internet. Oh yeah. Oh for sure. For a show. Like you a know? web series? Yeah. 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 That's like new it's new media, but they it wasn't paying well. No. Um she also started working with a new band called Rising Tide, which was a teen group from her hometown in New Jersey. Oh. I don't know why. That doesn't seem like a good move. That seems if moving back. Yeah, if you yeah, want to move yeah. up. Let me get together that shitty band I used to play <laughs> yeah. with in New Jersey. Yeah, it's like Springsteen. He plays in Madison <laughs> yeah. Square Garden. Then he goes back to the, the whatever shithole New Jersey town. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of respect that, though. She's bringing her friends up. Because she probably had uh, a band already and was like getting popular on her own. And she's like, fuck it all. Maybe she, she didn't want to seem like an industry plant or something. Yeah. Like, yeah, we got this crew that I know growing up. Yeah. It makes her look nice, but it's not the best career move, probably. Well, yeah, unless you wanted to start like the ultimate super group with like Selena Gomez and Justin Bieber. But yeah, I mean, <laughs> she doesn't want to seem like an industry plant. Yeah. Um, by April 2013, her YouTube page had 375 million views. Wow. And 2 million subscribers. That's money. 375 million views, 2 million subscribers. We're close to that. And that's back when, <laughs> yeah, we're on our way. <laughs> That's when YouTube was actually paying a lot of money. Like people yeah. would get like there were YouTube comedians that weren't even doing half that that were making twenty five thousand a month cutting checks. Yeah, Shane he built a castle with that YouTube money. Shane's coming up later, by the way. Is he? Yeah, good friends. What? Yes. Oh wow. Um. So Christina then opened for Selena Gomez again during her North American leg of her Star Dance tour. So. I mean, Selena Gomez just prints money. Like, as a kid, like, it must be a dream to be her parents, because you never worked a day in your life. Her momager. <laughs> yeah. That was a smart move. Very shrewd. Should put a bullet in her head, according to Alejandro. <laughs> <laughs> you guys always have this com this debate. Shrewd move. The we age should kill debate. her. Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> just for being a parent and a manager at the same time. No, I have no problem with momagers. I think Kyle's setting the table for getting his kid like really into showbiz as like a oh he's gonna be a two year old. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle's baby's gonna be the new Gerber baby. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're gonna put him right to work. Yeah, <laughs> can we get this fetus to work? Yeah, <laughs> get a job, yeah. the deadbeat bum. <laughs> so, um, what was I gonna say? Something about Selena. Oh, so she's taking care of her. Selena. Selena, yeah, they take care of each other. They're, nice. like, they're very friendly. They're not like, um, you know, like comics can be like, you know, cutthroat and like- Bitter, you know, jealous. Eat each other alive yeah. and shit like that. Not a Steve Harvey, Cat Williams situation. No, or there. Steve Harvey, Bernie <laughs> Mac. <laughs> yeah. Or that either, yeah. It's definitely not the King of the Comedy Tour. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or Steve Harvey and Mark Curry. Yeah. Yeah, yeah he all these people. He stole his whole act. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he did his TV show. <laughs> Look at it. Nah, he's, he's the principal with a whistle. <laughs> he's a, and he's got a wig on. <laughs> <laughs> I want to hear what Cat Williams thinks about Mama Jers. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, the, the funny is, I'll say this really quick about that. Uh -huh. I heard a response to one of those things at Cat Williams when he was on the set of Friday After Next, and he brought his kids there, and his, his whole family was basically on the set of fr the Friday After Next. Yeah. And he was bragging to all these guys about the fact that his kid could do um, his ABCs. And then the guy goes, and then the kid came up later, and the kid was 12 years old. <laughs> <laughs> um, and Greg Giraldo has a great bit about that, too. Like, yeah. After 9-11, my son came up to me. And he's like, why did the bad man hate us? And he's like, uh, you're fucking 18. I don't know. Read a newspaper. <laughs> it's like, my kid's retarded. That was the saddest day of my life. Oh, my God. <laughs> 
Okay, so back to Christina Grimmie. Uh, October 3rd, I think it's 2012 now, Christina Grimmie's music video for the song Tell My Mama was given its exclusive premiere on Billboard.com. So she's really crushing it on the mm, .com. She's here. a real dot com. <laughs> yeah. Wow. CAA, could you put me on MTV maybe? Yeah. I wonder if it's like either a blind spot for management or agents or whatever, or if they're knowing that the internet is the future because she's already famous from YouTube and then they think that the internet's just going to be this huge thing and she's going to be in on the ground floor. Yeah, maybe. She's like an internet phenomenon because I once you get pigeonholed in the in the industry, you're like that one thing. Yeah. Oh, like you're great online. Like we're not going to put you on a terrestrial or FM radio or anything because <laughs> that doesn't make sense. You're an internet person. Yeah. And they're like, how do we make money from that's basically all they care about. <laughs> yeah. um, she becomes friends with fellow YouTuber Shane Dawson. Mm. She goes on his show Shane and Friends very often. Oh, and that's where he got into trouble. Like around 2013? Was it a podcast? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I don't even know where to begin. He's talking about how kids are sexy and pretending to pleasure himself to Willow Smith, whip your hair. I think that around that time, yeah. He did a lot of blackface. Yeah, yeah blackface. Dropping the N-word. And yeah. on his podcast specifically, he mentioned how he thought six-year-olds were sexy. Very yeah. disturbing Sick stuff. puppy, yeah. I'm sorry that she had to be a part to of be that. subjected to that yeah well it's not the worst thing that happened to her uh, <laughs> uh 2014 she auditioned she auditioned for the voice mm. new show that is showcasing um voice talent yeah obviously singing talent i like how you're trying to describe it and it's been on for like 20 years i don't, I don't watch this like show top 20 yeah. show. i don't watch this show they use their vocal cords yeah and a voice comes out and then there's four sing four like industry people that turn their chair if they like it yeah i haven't watched one minute of that show i had a girl i graduated high school with uh on the first season of that show oh congratulations yeah. Casey Desmond. Shout out to Casey Desmond. what's your cut of that yeah <laughs> Um, she performs Miley Cyrus's Wrecking Ball, and Adam Levine is the one who turned around. Whoa. No, also, I'm sorry, Shakira and Usher and Blake Shelton also did. They all turned around. Yeah. She chose Adam Levine. Ah. Because he said she had the potential to become a huge star. He was right. And I'm sure he had some weird ideas about, you know, he's a weird guy. Why don't you come over to my he's hotel room? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll have my boxers on. You want to see my tattoos? <laughs> They're not real. <laughs> At that time, though, he was the king of the pop songs. He had so many hits. He was hot at that time. Yeah. It's kind of dried up a little since then. but Yeah, but he's like kind of canceled now. I think, Is he? I think he's quasi-canceled. Well, he know. got in trouble for cheating on his wife, which isn't oh, so that shouldn't bad in count. the things. Yeah. Okay, maybe he didn't. I don't yeah. Know. People were mad at him, though. Sure, but that's not the same as being canceled, canceled. Yeah. So on The Voice, she finishes third place behind winner Josh Kaufman and runner-up Jake Worthington. Carson Daly said he was shocked that Christina Grimmie did not win. If there's any consolation, it's that the host of Last Call thinks he should have won. <laughs> yeah. a show that nobody ever watched yeah. that was on for 15 seasons. Yeah. yeah. You also never know... Unless you actually know the production company whose interests are at heart, too. So, like, if it's run by a certain production company that has a tie to a certain label, they're going to push their person to the top no matter what. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Last Comic Standing, every winner was always Barry Katz's client. Yeah. He's just it's a showcase for his roster of it's comics. Fixed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is like a Cat Williams, like, conspiracy theory <laughs> thing. That, that's probably true what, also. Barry Katz. <laughs> yeah. It's his thing. Everything's fixed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's all political. <laughs> that's any time you didn't make Little League. It's all political. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if I recall correctly, Adam Levine spoke publicly about The Voice at some point saying that he's not sure why they couldn't actually make a real pop star. Like, they never had a Kelly Clarkson come out of that. Yeah. It was just Kelly Clarkson, though. Well, there's a few others. Yeah, Ruben Stutter. Clay Aiken for a second. Ruben Stutter. And our boy... Justin Guarino? <laughs> no. Um, he became the Dr. Pepper guy. I, Adam... What, is he Sideshow Bob-looking guy? Yeah. Yeah. Adam Lambert. Yeah, Adam Lambert. The, oh, yeah. Uh, Freddie well, Mercury. He's, wor he's working. <laughs> oh, he's working a lot. He's not a star. So think about what that says about third place in The Voice. Yeah. Hey, first place isn't even a star, according to Adam Levine. Yeah, based on that, like, she's not really much. 
when she comes out of this. Yeah, the third, you know, the second runner up to The Voice, that doesn't get you anywhere. Get you, you know, spit in the face. Right. How incredible <laughs> is that, though, that YouTube can make you a bigger star than this billion dollar corporation For that's sure. putting on a primetime show every single week. But she has showcasing. that to fall back on. She has her YouTube fans to fall back on. Yeah. She has she has a built-in audience already. Yeah. I think that's the key to this. Yeah. Why is she doing all these billboard.com going on the voice? She already has the fan base. She doesn't need any of that. But yeah. there's something about industry, especially out here, in which you have to you need a scooter brawn. You need someone who's really that person who knows how to craft a career or, or a, an artist like that. I don't mm -hmm. know what I don't really know that world at all. So I right. don't really no shit about it but there's something you need that in you know, that extra push i agree but again i'm surprised that she wouldn't get a scooter brawn anyway with her millions of views she doesn't need to go win the voice for that she's already proven herself just because the fucking dickhead from uh that whatever band uh maroon maroon five, five. says you should be a star it doesn't mean you should be i think she's great and i think she's a good singer but i don't know there's something people have to see in you in order for it to make sense i don't know i don't know any of that right stuff. you need a scooter broad i can't even get a scooter come on <laughs> <laughs> Let, we're cutting guy's mic right now <laughs> if you're wondering what that sound it is. just opened up a trap door <laughs> 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 in the in the new garage we're in. We got a new trap door. <laughs> so she decides she was gonna sign with Young Money Entertainment, which is Little Wayne's label. Um two 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 records, um a bunch of other she decides to sign with Island Records. So she gets a deal out of it. She gets a deal out of the voice. Um Island. I Island, yeah. 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 So I don't know what That's a big deal. I don't know what like the dollar amount for you, but I feel like they, you get fucked in a lot of these record contracts. Yeah, I, I believe that's what Amy Winehouse was signed with at one point. Oh, was she? Yeah, yeah. she yeah. kind of looks like Amy Winehouse. She does, but like more healthy. Well, yeah, yeah. much healthier, yeah. <laughs> much, much healthier. Yeah, yeah, like if you put Amy Winehouse into a healthy matic machine, <laughs> yeah, matic. <laughs> She's in the after. <laughs> So, yeah, she is releasing a bunch of music with the rest of the voice contestants and stuff. So she's still kind of part of that machine. Oh, she's clinging bit. to the other voice she, rejects? She's still, yes. Oy vey. Unfortunately. And she <laughs> tours with them a little bit, too. So now Selena's dropped her and she's got a tour with these fucking yeah. voice contestants? She's in a movie. She's in her uh, motion picture acting debut in The Matchmaker. Um, uh -huh. a 2016 movie? I've never heard of it. Okay. The Match, match Breaker. Released in... Oh, Match Breaker. Sorry, Match Breaker. Okay. It was released in select theaters, which means two places. Yeah. <laughs> LA yeah. and New York. <laughs> yeah, and for two hours. Yeah. <laughs> then they they pulled it. Yeah. Yeah, so it wasn't exactly La La Land. Yeah. Or Moonlight. On June 10th, 2016, Christina Grimmie performs with Before You Exit, which is a band at the Plaza Live in Orlando, Florida. Hmm. The Plaza Live is like, it's like a mid-level theater concert venue. Okay. It's like, it's a former movie theater that they turned into like a concert venue. Yeah. So it's not like a huge place. It's not like an arena by any stretch of the imagination. I don't know about, is this like a pop punk type band? Um, it sounds like that. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't know if that's the best idea to put exit in your band name. Before you exit. Yeah. It sounds like part of the building. You yeah. Know? Especially <laughs> yeah. if you're playing a club gig in Orlando. Like, yeah. Just encouraging people. Well, th she just jumps on tours whenever like she can make some money. Like, I think this is her CA agent like saying, yeah. hey, do you want to make, you know, a quick 20 grand? Do this. God. I would do it. Well, yeah, of course. Yeah, I'd run across fucking the 101 right now this for is, 20 grand. It's, <laughs> it's her version of Uber Eats. Oh, yeah. Like, I'll, yeah, sure, I'll tour with Before You Exit. and But talented music person version of you Uber Eats. Exactly. You, yes. <laughs> yeah, we need some extra talent here. You know, we're we're looking for anything. Yeah, the venue's uh, 1,200 people standing. So yeah. it's a it's a legit theater for yeah small theater for but not for a big act millions of followers on YouTube yeah yeah I get what you're saying but she has fans oh, we're gonna see in a minute <laughs> oh, okay. some unfortunately That's nice. yeah uh <laughs> I can't wait to hear about the lovely fans <laughs> that come out of the woodwork 
<laughs> oh, we're back, baby. Um, this is her last stop before she goes back to L.A. This Jeez. is like the last leg of her tour. So her last days were spent in Orlando. Jesus. Yeah. Mama mia. I know. Or- is Orlando that bad? Yes. <laughs> okay. <that's- laughs> Kyle? It's all right. It's oh, muggy yeah. as all hell. It's what? Muggy. Oh, well, yeah. Well, that's Florida, though. Yeah. Florida's got a got a weird level of de- muggy depression going yeah. on with it. People yeah. from Massachusetts think Florida is like heaven on earth. That <laughs> says it all. My dad's like, oh, I got my place in Florida. You know, like, <laughs> yeah, great. Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> sell it. Burn it. <laughs> so, was that like, uh, <laughs> sell it, man? <laughs> that's another thing for another time. It's um, muggy and there's alligators. Yeah. Alligators eating kids at Disneyland. Yeah, I'm sorry if that's not what I'm into. Or Disney World. Yeah, it feels like a place to be on the lamb or something. Like, there's, like, bad hotels and, like, yeah. it's, like, sketchy. Like, that Willem Dafoe movie really summed it up perfectly. Which one? The Florida Project. The Florida Project, oh. yeah. Just, like, the sadness mixed with, like, the weird amusement park kind of thing going exactly. on. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Um. So a fan of Christina's, Kevin James Loibel pays a cabbie $200 to bring him from St. Petersburg to a courtyard by Marriott Inn around the corner from the venue. Okay, so she's still in Florida. Still in Florida. This is the night before the venue. Mm. This gentleman, Kevin James Loibel, L-O-I-B-L. Big fan of hers, uh, 27 years old, not telling a lot of his friends and family that he's a big fan of hers. He's embarrassed? Maybe embarrassed. Maybe it, it is embarrassing for a 27-year-old kid to be a fan of this... <laughs> 27-year-old man. Yeah, To man. be a fan of this teen girl. And then when he <laughs> tries to describe her to friends, he's like, she was third place on The Voice. Yeah. She performed on Billboard.com. Yeah. He's kind of a weird guy. He's kind of like an introvert. So they're both introverts. Hey, that's a good point. I think that's maybe why he thinks he wants to court her, mm. not to be confused with Courtyard by Merit. Um, he wants to court her, and he wants to have a relationship with Christina Grimmie. Judging by his picture, he had a long climb for that to work. Well, around the time that he's going to meet her, he gets hair plugs. No, I shut up. I swear to God. Does wow. he have them in this photo I'm looking at? I'm, I couldn't find one in which he did get them because he doesn't look it. He's that weird kind of 20-something where he's 27 going on 65. Yeah. Yes. He did not age well. His 20s didn't go well. He spent a lot of his 20s in his bedroom of his parents' house, and he's still living with his parents at the time that he's getting a cab, so clearly he doesn't have a car to drive to Orlando. Is that for some reason like he never learned, or did he have a DWI? I think there's a major difference between introverted and recluse. Like I feel like this. Yeah, dude, he's a he's like, a the latter part of it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. yeah, and I think Christina is just like I'm introverted, isn't like quirky, but like no, right? I think she was wearing it like a fashion, like oh, I'm an introvert. When you can't be an introvert, she does like after, if you're out touring and yeah, she does after show like meet and greets, and when she like and she meets people, and this is kind of led to her downfall. Yeah. But yeah, she meets a lot of people. An introvert would be at home eating Cheetos, watching this on YouTube. Yeah. In bed. Yeah. Yeah. Like exactly. Eating, eating pizza in bed. Yes. Like they're not going <laughs> to, they have trouble leaving the house to run errands, yeah. much less go compete on The Voice and tour with before you exit. Yeah. Yeah. He's one of those guys. He, um, very big into video games, World of Warcraft and all that stuff. And mm. I'm, I'm never very familiar with the, the, any video games like that, but like he works as for the Geek Squad. Ah, uh, <laughs> the Geek Squad. Yeah, he's one of the Geek Squad. Yeah. He's a geek. He's the head geek. <laughs> Resident geek. <laughs> to be fair, though, this guy shows up to fix your computer. He has the right look for it. Yeah. I'm like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. That, that tracks. He's going to fix it. But he might wear my skin, too. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but he also... um not only did he get hair plugs, but he lost like 30 pounds. He started, he didn't really work out, but he, uh, he got starved his, himself. He got his teeth fixed a little bit. Oh, what? Yeah. I want to see like the comparison. 
He's making himself presentable. Because this after picture isn't so glamorous. He's a very sad person. He comes from a kind of a rough home, very kind of violent home. Oh, no. His mom, like a couple years before when he's 21 years old, commits suicide by taking an overdose of aspirin. Jeez. That's not that's that's a lot of aspirin. I Yeah, that's a lot. That's not an easy way to go. I wonder no. if, did she get the store brand? <laughs> I guess. I don't know. No, it's even sadder. She had to get the generic brand. Yeah. <laughs> no, but this is also a sadder part. I'm sorry. He brought it up. Yeah, no. Come on. Alan. I know. I know. So he was going to tell his mom confronted her, her and just said, I'm very depressed. You know, things aren't going well. And he said he convinced her. He says, I think you should kill yourself. Oh, so he's a sociopath. I think he might be that, too. Yeah. I actually think that she just took one look at him. She's like, this is my offspring. Yeah. Anyone have a gun, a knife? This family is- I got I got some aspirin. Yeah, and she's like, whatever works. Let me yeah, just get this going. It's Walmart. Brand. It says pain reliever. <laughs> yeah. I got to take them all. Very bad. Like, You ever have the people that you knew in your hometown that are like, that family is fucked? Yeah. And this is them. In Fond du Lac? <laughs> Never. Yeah, that's I, that's everyone. That's where everyone moves. <laughs> <laughs> they leave other towns and they all... In Weymouth? Huh. Of course yeah. not. Wait, Framingham? No way. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, it's he's from a very troubled home. He has one friend. Mm. This guy, Kevin Harrington, who is like his best bud, who like... Who swears by him and like... Um, they play video games together probably. They play video games all the time. And Kevin Loibel, his plan was in order to get Christina Grimey, he was going to become a video game YouTuber. That's why he was trying to try to make himself look more presentable because he was going to be a YouTube phenomenon, whatever. Yeah, playing World of Warcraft. Yeah. Oh, he was gonna. Which I get. he never started. He, he never even started. Yeah. Well, the thing with Loibel is he really loved her, but he didn't want to tell anyone about it. Like his manager at the Geek Squad was like, hey, uh, how about this uh, Grimmy you're into? And he's like, I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> he didn't want to talk about the like the thing he was most into, which yeah. was this young singer who was 22 years old. But what's right? Why, why not just say, like, oh, I have a crush on this girl? Yeah. <laughs> I have this thing where I, I actually like a lot of bands with female singers. And my buddy. Here we go. Yeah, there's a lot of great female singers, male singers. Yeah, yeah. you got the Breeders, you got Flyleaf. Sure. I like all these bands, right? Yeah, he wants right. points, man. No, and my buddy back <laughs> home would be like, "Oh, you gay? You you like chicks singing?" And I'm like, "Oh, you'd rather guys sing to you?" Yeah, that's yeah, more oh, that's gay. a good one. <laughs> that's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good retort, which I'm sure you did, you thought about it later. But no, you know. <laughs> I, did, I did say it in the moment. <laughs> oh, good, 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 good. <laughs> Well, I don't know what it's like in, uh, you know, St. Petersburg, Florida, and like what the bully, you know, situation was, and you know what masculinity was going on down there. But this guy was afraid of a fucking fly. He didn't want to tell anyone one iota who. In his room, he had nothing on the walls, nothing to show like what type of personality he was, what he was all about. And no he, paint, nothing. No nothing. <laughs> Nothing yeah, like Yeah, but if he had pictures of her. He had no her, riz. This guy look, had no riz. That would look really creepy if he had a bunch of cutouts of her. That's well, he I probably did stashed under his mattress. Ah. No, that they were all gone. Well, l l well, I don't okay. want I'm getting into the crime scene now. Here we go. All right, let's talk about it. Yeah. So, he pays $200 for a cab to bring him there to Orlando, Florida from St. Petersburg. He paid $269 for the hotel, brings no luggage. He's just going to go to a concert of his favorite singer that night. 200 bucks. He, so he's out 469 so far. And that's uh, St. Petersburg to Orlando. Yes. Yeah, that's far. So he brings no luggage, but he brings two guns and two boxes of bullets with 25 rounds. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm actually getting vibes of Bardo, John Bardo, who yeah. murdered Rebecca Schaefer. Yeah. A it's bit. a very similar. He took the bus over and brought his weapon. Yeah. yeah. So before the concert in the the courtyard by Marriott, he straps two guns to him and a five inch hunting knife in his left ankle. So he's not ready just to go to a Christina Grimmie concert, I yeah. don't think. In case Mickey Mouse tries to jump him, he'll be ready with that knife. As Christina Grimmie is getting pizza with her brother in a uh, like a strip mall around the corner. So he knew where she was? No. Oh. 
But he was just separately getting it. He bought a baseball cap from Old Navy right next to where she was getting pizza. She he didn't know she was going to coincidence. Total coincidence. Wow. So she goes on, like has a good show, good concert. Um, after her performance ended at 10 p.m. local time, she signs autographs inside the venue. At 10:24 p.m., she's approached by then 27-year-old Kevin James Loibel. So they're meeting face to face for the first time. She opens her arms to hug him. Kevin Loibel then pulled his Glock pistol out of his back pocket and shot her three times at point blank range. Jesus. Uh. Kevin Loibel was then tackled by Grimmy's brother, remember, who was on the road mm-hmm. with her? Yeah. And the men scuffled for a bit. Kevin Loibel breaks free, backs himself against the wall, and fatally shoots himself in the temple with one of his Glocks. Holy shit. All right. So, wait, she went to hug him? Like that already, that's more than he could have ever hoped for, that when he meets her, she's going to give him a hug. I know. Why, yeah. don't, why don't you start from there? And yeah. Maybe something. What an asshole. What a piece of he did Clearly, he did not go there to meet someone. No. Or maybe even if he was trying to like shoot his shot. He, well, 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 that's he, a he bad, did. bad terminology, maybe. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know what I mean. Yeah. You miss every shot you don't take. <laughs> Good Lord. Yeah, he didn't miss that night. Fuck. Unfortunately. Very unfortunately. Yeah. That is just, I don't even know what to call it, bad luck, but he had his sights on her. Would he have followed her elsewhere anyway? Maybe. Uh, She was on the floor bleeding from the head with a weak pulse after CPR was performed on her by an attending physician. She was taken to Orlando Regional Medical Center in critical condition. By 10.59 p.m., she was pronounced dead. Oof. Jeez. An autopsy performed the following day concluded that uh, she died after being shot once in the head and twice in the chest. So he did hit all his shots. Unfortunately, he didn't yeah. even get the hug. Like that to me is insane. And he probably never got to hug a girl anyway. Yeah, that would have been you know momentous for him. Yeah, the hug probably would have changed everything. Yeah, but he's already in his head. He's got this sick fantasy that he's in love with her and they're meant to be together. So he's, he gets himself, you know, all fixed up. He fixes his teeth, gets his hair plugs, has this whole mission to start a YouTube channel and become a Twitch streamer, blah, blah, blah. And just goes there knowing he's going to get rejected. And is like, if I can't have you, no one will. He didn't yeah. even talk to her yet. One of the witnesses complained that there was mo- no metal detectors at the venue and that the security was really just concerned about the food and beverages being brought to the theater and not about any guns. So if you had like a big thing of popcorn bulging out of your chest, <laughs> they'd stop you. But this is more like Woodstock 99. Remember that, that that's really what they cared about. Well, it's not that bad. Yeah. It's not that bad, but it's like they're more concerned about the concessions than they yeah. are, you know, anyone bringing a fucking gun in Jesus. and blowing the talent's fucking brains out i thought you were gonna say that someone complained that it was too loud (laughs) no (laughs) the guns the the, the shots can you keep it down yeah but seriously i don't know how he got the guns probably his friend helped him i don't want to implicate anyone but florida it's a little easier his friend said he did not know kevin harrington his buddy there said he did not know that this was going to go down. All his friends said to him was like, I'll see you in the next life or something. He didn't tell his family that he was even going to this concert. He told his one only friend in this world, I'm going to go and I'll see you uh, when we ascend. Mm. That was the word. I'll see you once we ascend. Yeah, apparently it's very easy in Florida, but for this wacko to get these guns and just be able to do as he pleases. And the security there, too. You know, it happens fast. I get it. But what the hell? Witnesses described Kevin Loibel as nervous and kind of creepy. You think? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) That's a little Monday morning quarterbacking, though. Yeah. Um, Those people that went to school with a serial killer. Yeah. Like, I always thought he was creepy. (laughs) Uh, He did not. He bought the guns legally. Which well, is Florida? They, they, yeah. give, they give you a gun to be, you know, with a bag of sun chips. You know, like <laughs> they'll just get, you know, there's not really a problem down there. Yeah, it's muggy. There's alligators, and everyone has a gun. Everyone's got a gun. What could go wrong? No diagnosis of mental illness or violence in the past. Like this is his first kind of rodeo. Wow, that's what's so scary about it. These stories, like Bardo with Rebecca Schaefer. Just a sicko fan coming up and killing their idol out of nowhere. 
It's kind of like that that Arizona congresswoman. Remember, she got shot in the Gabby, head by that Gabby Gifford. Yeah, yeah. It, it's just like, and he off. was a YouTuber. Was he? Yeah, the shooter of Gabby Giffords. He had a YouTube channel. He was on Rogan. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, so what's up with the guns, man? <laughs> so it comes full circle with yeah. YouTube. And this guy wanted to be a YouTube star. Yeah, there was no proof that he tried. When the cops went to his room and did a search, there was no... He, he totally scrubbed his entire phone and put like a um, a code on it that you couldn't even find anything on it. Mm. And then he de- he like deleted it and like burned his hard drive on his computer. So there was no evidence of him doing... I, imagine the stuff that was going on that hard drive. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Jeez Louise. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's filled with like... <laughs> Give you nightmares. <laughs> <laughs> like high school musical clips and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God, but yeah. But what was he trying to hide? Like, he killed himself anyway, and they know that he did it. Like, what further could they find? I that? think just shame. I think he just had severe shame of, like, what he was and, you know... What his whole family structure, it was all fucked up. His dad got a new girlfriend, too, which is not that kind of fucked up the whole situation because he like got in a fight with her recently. Um, uh, and like, I think the girlfriend was like, dude, your son's a creep. I'm going to try to help him out. Yeah. And like, like she wasn't able to, like he was just so far gone. That's what happened with Elliot Roger. Who's that? The guy that shot up the school in Santa Barbara. He was having major problems with his dad's new girlfriend. Yeah. And cause a lot of tension. Yeah. So this family drama, I guess it makes a psychopath actually act, it seems like. Yeah. I think when his world was closing in a little bit, you know, it was mm. getting weird. Like people are asking him questions about why you're such a psycho and why you're so weird. And, you know, he has no nowhere to go. And Best Buy obviously has a great screening process. <laughs> yeah. I mean, fucking, what did he say during the interview to be on the Geek Squad? <laughs> I'm into World of Warcraft. <laughs> yeah. And I stalk this voice runner up. YouTube yeah. children. Yeah. If you're the most insane person in the world, you get a job there. Yeah. <laughs> what do the other Geek Squatters look like? Oh, my God. It's like an intel army. <laughs> yeah, it looks like the Suicide Squad. Yeah. <laughs> There's like a reptile. Literally, yeah. they're all going to kill themselves. Yeah. A they reptile, don't... a pedophile. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my. <laughs> and it's the same person. Um, but, yeah, uh, you know, he was just kind of a sick puppy, and I think he felt bad about what he did to his well, – what happened to his mom. His mom killed herself did with a she? bunch of aspirin. I don't think he felt bad if he told her to do it. Did he do it? He probably Maybe. felt powerful. No. Did he shove it down her throat? I think he did feel bad about it. I think he didn't know the ramifications of like saying something like that. You're like, yeah, you should kill you. Like, do you remember that True Detective season one where uh, Matthew McConaughey says to a, a woman like a uh, suspect, mm-hmm. if you have the chance, I think you should kill yourself. Like, it's like so creepy. But yeah. like, I think he meant it in the moment. Just like the case of Michelle Carter, the Glee girl. Yeah. She told her long-suffering friend to kill himself and helped him do it via text. So he maybe did the same thing for his own mom. Kids are fucked up. They are fucked up. <laughs> yeah, like, There's a reason I don't why... know if they're getting worse or we just hear the news more about it. I, you know, <laughs> there's more media out there. But yeah, there's a reason why really not considered mature until like, 27 no but you know like when i was a kid i knew there were bad people who were kids like they were they were kids who were fucking complete psychopaths and that girl is one of them yeah that's not just an immature thing michelle carter yeah the one that's telling her friend to kill him or boyfriend to kill himself that's true you need to do it you need to go like she's just fucking sick i have to say though we never met the kid i (laughs) yeah Yeah, maybe she was doing everyone a favor. Cripes. No, but I actually had some empathy for her after seeing, after doing my research. Anyway, um, <laughs> his empathy meter is way wrong. Oh, we cannot get into that. <laughs> yeah. There's another. Yeah, argument. you're like a sociopath. I no, think. I'm, yeah. are you nuts? <laughs> I am. Um, you're the salt of the earth. No, I feel for Grimmy. I'm outraged. I'm mad. I am Sheila, the the Grimmy God, or yeah. something. Yeah. Well, I have something else to add here. The Orlando Police Department tried to, you know, scrape together a motive. 
And the only thing they could come up with is that he was a weird hermit who was infatuated with this singer and she was starting to date other people. And it was kind of like, if I can't have you, these guys can't either or no one can. And he was just, yeah, very territorial. And I think that's uh, some would say a toxic masculinity thing. Really? How does the masculinity come in? I don't know. He doesn't look very <laughs> he's <a> masculine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's, yeah. he's a guy who wants possession of this this girl. Okay, yes, in that case. And also it's just the classic deranged stalker turns killer. Yeah, that is kind of classic. That's it a is. classic American thing. Yeah. This is exactly by the book that story. Yeah. I, I remember Jane on 30 Rock. She like paid someone to be her stalker or something. Like, oh, you know, made some it. people like to have yeah. a stalker. Yeah, you made it when you had a stalker. Oh, yeah. <laughs> God. I don't need any fans. You know what? Stop listening to the podcast. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they are. They have. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, our hiatus was a little too long. <laughs> the word is out there. Um, so Christina funeral on June 16th, Christina Grimmie was buried at Berlin Cemetery in a private ceremony. Mm. The following day, thousands of friends and fans uh, attended a public memorial held in Medford, New Jersey. Dozens of artists and other celebrities took to social media in response to Christina Grimmie's death. The voice tweeted, there are no words. We lost a beautiful soul in an amazing voice. Like the show tweeted that? The show, yeah, the okay. show's... Yeah, the, the entity that is the show. <laughs> yeah, the, the, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just some creature, like, in the basement. Like, yeah, there's an like NBC Universal, like, created entity. <laughs> <laughs> that, that AI version of uh, The Voice yeah. tweeted it. Adam Levine, who's you know kind of an AI you know formulated thing, also <laughs> <laughs> he said he was absolutely devastated and heartbroken. Mm. Uh, this is yet another senseless act of extreme violence. Very true. Yeah, and Selena Gomez said something. Um, she said she was very broken up about the the murder, and like you know, I'm sure she's got her own stalkers too. Like, yeah, oh yeah, that's what I was just thinking though, because you hear about all these cases where people like Gwyneth Paltrow, Jennifer Aniston, they'll take their stalkers to court, and in another terrible scenario, if these guys aren't caught, these kind of things could happen more often. It's just too bad this guy wasn't caught. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because they catch these guys. Yeah. You know, you just have to be hyper aware of this. And obviously, when you're a little more famous, have a little more money, it's probably easier to have a team in place that can squash these people. Well, they talked about this. Like, her death led to increased calls for increased security at performing art venues. Like, good. Um, well, the uh, American heavy metal band Pantera actually noted the similarities between her death and um Dimebag Daryl. And Daryl Abbott, which is also named as Dimebag Daryl Abbott. Um and three others in two thousand four there was a, a murder of like a bunch of rock stars. I actually remember that moment hearing about that when it happened. I'm telling you, these stories really do freak me out. Yeah. The idea that you could just be having a good time on stage or wherever and someone just ends your life. That yeah. one chilled me to the bone, the dime bag. Yeah. It was just, I was like, what? Someone from the audience just shot him? Yeah, another recluse that said that Pantera stole songs that he wrote. Oh, really? <laughs> they never met this guy, never seen him before. And he's like, that, that's my song. Well, that, that's like an early version of Cat Williams, kind of. Yeah. Like. <laughs> I did that as a dime bag song. <laughs> um, and the Plaza Live reopened four days after the shooting. Wow. They paid tribute to her, but then they, I'm sure they did like, and the guy from Full House. You know? <laughs> like, yeah. like they kind of move on, you know? Who also died in Orlando. Who? Bob Saget. Oh, yeah, that's right. It was Orlando. I forgot that. This was Adam all- Marriott. Really? Yeah. Shit goes down around, like the Paul shooting was around this time, too, yeah. when when Christina Grimmie got killed also. Yeah, that was summer 2016. Yeah. And then Trump gave it a shout out at his convention speech. <laughs> they died like dogs. <laughs> no, he was like, and we have to support the LGBT. QT community. Yeah, yeah, he did fuck all that up. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and did you know that the band that she was touring with in Florida, to be timely, they changed their name to Before You Brexit? Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
We're leaving that just to show that we're back, baby. <laughs> still got it. Still got it. <laughs> this thing is still on. We are back. <laughs> it's getting cut out soon. Wowza. Wowza. Yeah, so I don't know. I, I don't really have much else to add to that. Like, you know, weird guy, as you can see in the picture, like. Um, final you know, thoughts. Final thoughts. Um, very sad. I think it's just another it's s- string of things of bad gun deaths in this country. Yep. And so talented. Like she had, you can just see in her videos, her photos, like she had star power. Yeah. And like, what a waste. Yep. And all because she was sharing her gift with the world. It's just weird how these people attach themselves to certain stars and celebrities. I'm like, oh, it's so fucking it's, annoying. It's either you get to the level where you get the security and like to save mm-hmm. yourself like Selena Gomez or you're at like a mid level like Christina Grimmie and you're like in peril. You're in danger. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's worth it not to do it at that point. Your brother's your security guard. Yeah. And he like we he saw did, how that worked. Did out. everything he could, you know? No, I know. I I'm not, I don't mean anything by that. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> No more meet and greets. <laughs> exactly. She needed someone to say, like, don't hug your deranged fans. Yeah. We're not going to do a meet and greet after this. She like, put her arms up and uh, I know, hugged that, the guy. That is so, that's the most tragic part of it all that she was going to That must to have been the best him. moment of his life. You know, working with the Geek Squad, like, his life must have been miserable. And then this, you know, beautiful girl singer hugs him. Why can't you just have a good moment? Yeah. Yeah. Take the win. Take the win. There's a lot of assholes like that, like Mark David Chapman. Yeah. He got an autograph from John Lennon. Yeah. Oh, John did he? Lennon was nice yeah. to him. Then he came back and boom. Yep. Is he the one that was trying to, he did it for Jodie Foster or was that? No, that's um, Hinckley. It's funny, like, yeah. oh, which, which insane maniac was, shooter was that in the 70s? We've it's come like, full circle now, though, too, because Hinckley's on YouTube now. Oh, what? yeah. What? Hinckley's got a popular YouTube channel. What? Yeah. Yeah. He's oh probably gonna God. do. He's probably gonna do a show at this fucking plaza venue down in fucking Orlando. I've Jesus told you this before, Christ. Kyle, and you reacted the same way every time. Wow. What, if, what if he has a fan show for the meet and greet, oh, and the, the fan oh. takes him out? Oh, that would be. That's the most American story yeah. ever happened. Yeah. Let's. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm not gonna say let's hope, but let's just, yeah. let's just wait and see what yeah. happens. <laughs> Stay tuned. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a good way to end it here. Yeah. Rest in peace. Christina Grimmy. R.I.P. R.I.P. Gone too soon. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I guess before we go here, we should add that we are in a new studio. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And we got a lot of exciting things coming in 2024, including a live stream show that will be weekly on YouTube. Yeah. Death in Entertainment Tonight Live. Yep. And we're going <laughs> to continue this whole thing, this podcast every week. Yep. And what else? Patreon. More to come. Pay attention. Uh, Yeah. Patreon. Get on it. We love our current patrons, and we would love some more. Yes. Yeah, tell your friends. And there's a lot of great stuff on there, including Jada Pinkett Smith, the deep dive. Yeah. And then another part to the In Memoriam, if you can believe it. Can you believe that? We have more hours of In Memoriam of people that were left off our YouTube special. There's so many. Currently, that's the only way to see our annual In Memoriam special. It's on YouTube right now. Yes. So. Chickity check it. We're just. Check it. Trying different shoes on, you know. Yeah. See what fits. Anything else, boys? I think that's it. I think we covered it. Okay. Well, until next week. Don't go dinos. Bye-bye. You have just heard... A true Hollywood murder mystery. I have never seen anything like this before. The movies, Broadway, music, television, all of it. A place that manufactures nightmares. Okay, everybody, that's a wrap. Good night. Please drive home carefully and come back again soon. 